there. I'm Carol Lutzinger. I'm part of the Solar System Ambassadors Program with NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I'm also a teacher for BISD and a member of the South Texas Astronomical Society and a strong supporter of our local library. If you're curious about what this picture is on your screen right now, this is planet Earth taken from the International Space Station that has been orbiting around the Earth for about 20 years, taking pictures of our planet. And as you can see, there is an awful lot of light pollution all around our planet. You can see that Africa is dark for the most part. You can see that Australia is dark for the most part. Russia, the middle part, uh, those are in the mountains and it's dark. South America, where the jungles are, is dark. Canada, where there's few people living, is dark. But look at the United States. We're lit up like a Christmas tree. So is Europe, India, Japan. It has no dark spots at all. And so people who like to look at the sky at night have formed a group called the International Dark Sky Association. And this week of April, is trying to call attention to the fact that we have a lot of light pollution and people can't see the stars. And it's so much fun to be able to go for a walk with the family in the evening as the sun sets and look up at the sky and see stars. One of your favorite storybook characters might be Curious George. I know he's one of my favorites. And the people who wrote the stories about Curious George used the stars to find their way to safety a long time ago. And when they got to safety, they started writing stories and they really liked talking about astronomy and the stars in the sky. So new people have come along and written more stories about the adventures of Curious George, that rascally little monkey who's always getting in trouble. And today's story is not much different. George thinks he's gotten in trouble but we'll wait and see if he's really in trouble or not. The title of the story is Curious George Discovers the Stars. And this book is written from a television show that was on many years ago about Curious George. And the person who wrote it was Bethany Freitas. And it's based on the TV series teleplay written by Ray Lankford. It's published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt in Boston and New York. And if you want to read this book, it is in our local library. And you can go to the library website and find Curious George and all of his adventures along with many, many, many other wonderful books for you to read and spend time having adventures just like Curious George. So let's get going on the story itself. Have you ever wondered how many stars there are in the sky? George has especially when he's in the country. In the country, the summer nights are cool. You can hear frogs croaking and the sky is full of stars. One night, George was outside looking at the sky when he heard Bill's voice. Hi, George, it's a great night for stargazing, Bill called from his window. But George wasn't just looking at the stars, he was trying to figure out how many stars there were in the sky. There must be hundreds. Not even scientists know how many stars are up there, Bill said. George thought it was time somebody found out. And if you look at the side page on this book, you'll see that there's a picture there of someone looking through what looks like a bunch of pipes. Those pipes are called a telescope, and telescopes are used by scientists who are called astronomers to study what's up in the night sky. People have looked at the stars and wondered about the mysteries of space for thousands of years. Early astronomers used the stars in the sky to find their way and to make calendars. We still use some of their methods today. George knew that the most important rule of counting anything was keeping track. I'll bet you've heard your teacher say that. He found a notepad and pencil and made a mark for each star as he counted it. There were so many stars to keep track of, but he kept at it. One, two, three, four, five, but 
George fell asleep mid-count. That was okay. After a good night's rest, he would be ready to start counting again the next night. There was only one problem. His counting system didn't keep track of which stars he had already counted. So last night's count didn't count. George figured the only way he could count the stars without losing track was to count all the stars really fast before he fell asleep. But George wasn't fast enough. And look, there's the man carrying George and his notepad into the house to tuck him in bed. I wonder if George snores. Bill stopped by the following day. Morning, fellas. The man waved, but George still felt sleepy. George was up late counting stars, the man said. Too bad you can't count stars during the day. They're always up there, you know, Bill said. We just can't see them because the sun is so bright. George wasn't so sure. He wondered what really happened to stars during the day. Maybe they went to sleep or got blown out like candles on a birthday cake. Wherever they went, George couldn't count stars he couldn't see. Did you know Bill is right? The sun, moon, and stars are always in the sky, but we can see them only at certain times. Our eyes can't see the small light of the stars during the day because of the bright, big light of the sun. Test it out. Experiment. Try this experiment. Sit in a dark room and turn on a flashlight. Notice how bright the flashlight is in the dark. Now turn on the lights in the room and keep your flashlight on. Does the flashlight still look as bright as it did when the room was dark? There are lots of differences between the sky during the day and the sky at night, the man said. We can see the moon and the stars at night, but we can only see the sun during the day. Right, said Bill, because at night the sun is shining on the other side of Earth. When it's nighttime here, it's daytime there. When it came to day sky and night sky, George was sure about two things. He couldn't count stars during the day, and he couldn't count all of the stars in one night. He wasn't going to give up. Did you know that the sun and the moon are very different? The sun is a star that gives off heat and energy that plants and animals on Earth need to live. The sun stays in the same spot while Earth spins and moves in a circle around the sun. This is called orbiting. The moon is made up mostly of rock. Though it looks bright, it can't make light. It reflects light from the sun. The moon orbits the Earth. George took a good long look at the night sky. The stars were scattered around like confetti. And like confetti, there wasn't a pattern in the way they were arranged unless... George noticed a group of stars that looked familiar. They looked like an upside down cap. George could use this star shape as a placekeeper. He counted the stars below it and marked them on his pad. Then he counted the stars above it and on each side. Now in the sidebar, there is a picture of a special constellation called Ursa Major. It's called the Big Bear or the Big Dipper. And if you draw dots on a sheet of paper and connect them, you might be able to come up with your own constellation of the bear. Did you know that the star shape George saw is called the Big Dipper? Thousands of years ago, people began naming shapes they saw in the stars. They called these shapes constellations. The Big Dipper is part of an even bigger constellation called the Great Bear. There are 88 constellations in all. Many of them still have their ancient names, such as Orion, Leo, and Scorpio. These star shapes were named by astronomers and used to map the stars just the way George did. George had a system. He could use star shapes to keep track of which stars he had already counted. 
When he got tired, he could go to bed and know where he left off for the next night's count. At the end of the week, it was time for George and the man to return to the city. George had made a lot of progress on his star counting, and now that he had a system, he could count the stars in the city, too. Big hot city, here we come, the man said. In the sidebar, there's a little girl looking through a telescope in her yard. Did you know that the night sky looks different depending on where you are on Earth? You can see different constellations from North America than you can from Australia, on the other side of the planet. Lucky for George, the big city is close enough to the country house that the sky is the same in both places. Oh, the city was very hot. George couldn't wait to get into the cool air-conditioned lobby. But it was just as warm inside their building as it was outside. Is the air conditioner broken? The man asked. No, said the poor man. But we're not allowed to use it. You'll have to keep yours off in the apartment, too. George wondered why. Too many air conditioners running at once need at once needs a lot of electricity. It can cause the power to go out, the man said. I guess we'll be a little warm tonight. But George wasn't worried about electricity and being too hot. He had stars to count. George knew he would have a great view of the city from the roof. But when he got up there and looked around, he noticed something strange. In the city, he couldn't see any stars at all. George went back to the apartment to see his friend. It's tough to count stars in the big bright city, the man explained. George was confused. It's like trying to count stars in the daytime. They're up there, but we can't see them. Another did you know in the sidebar. George can't see the stars because there is too much man-made light in the city. Just like the sun outshining the stars during the day, the street lights and lights from city buildings are bright enough to block out the natural light of the stars at night. With no stars to count, George figured he might as well go to bed. But it was too hot to sleep. The one time he could have stayed awake all night long to count, he couldn't see a single star. George took a walk out onto the balcony. His neighbors had their air conditioners on. George could hear them humming. Would it really hurt if he turned the AC on just for a minute? The cool, cool, cold air felt good on George's face. But a moment later, the AC and all of the lights in the apartment went out. George ran back up to the roof. Uh-oh, the lights were out in all the buildings around him. Could one curious little monkey cause a citywide blackout? George didn't know, but there was only one thing to do at a time like this, hide. Did you know that blackout is another word for power outage? A blackout can happen for a lot of reasons. Windy weather and falling trees can damage power lines, for example. And too many people in one area use a lot of electricity at the same time, the system might shut down. Important buildings like hospitals have backup generators that can give them power during a blackout. Before long, the man found George in his hiding spot. Look where George was hiding. You see the box that he's in? George was upset about turning off the city's electricity. It wasn't your fault, George, the man said. It takes more than one little monkey to cause a blackout. Just then, the doorman and Hundley joined them on the roof. This blackout's really something, isn't it? The doorman asked. Yes, said the man, but George thinks the blackout was his fault. He turned on our air conditioner. I thought it was my fault, too, said the doorman. Hundley was so hot, I turned on our AC for just a minute. Then all the lights went out. I bet a lot of people thought the same thing. George was relieved. Well, George, there is one good thing about this blackout. Now you can see the stars. It was true. Now that all the electrical lights were out and the city was dark, he could see the sky full of stars again. George found the big upside down cap and settled in for a good long star count. Now the story ends there, but you can continue 
look at the next page in the library book. This is an activity for you to do at home. I hope that this Curious George story sends you out with your family to take a walk after the sun sets and look up at the sky and see what you can see from your neighborhood. And that is the end of our story today. Thanks for watching.